Hello again and welcome to the second video in this tutorial series looking at how to learn to program using Scratch. Uh, my name is Justin Arnold and you're either watching this on my YouTube channel, The Tech Train, or on the website computerscience.click. In either case, you're very welcome and I hope you've looked at the first lesson in which I took you through the basics of Scratch and how to uh, get started with the layout, where everything is on the screen, and the very simple program program where we got Abby to say hello and then think hum. Um, so what are we looking at in this lesson? Well we're focusing on something called input and output. So what is input and output? Well basically input is where you are putting information into a computer. There are different ways in which we can do that. The most common is of course using a keyboard or a mouse. But we might also use a microphone like the one I'm using now, uh, a webcam like the one again that I'm using now. So it's ways in which we can put information into a computer. And of course, the information going into my computer at the moment is different types. For example, if I'm using the keyboard, I'm putting text information into the computer. If I'm using my mouse, then the clicks and the movement of the mouse are sending instructions to the computer that it understands relate to what it does with the arrow on the screen. My microphone is not putting text instructions into the computer, but sound. And the webcam is, of course, putting pictures or video instructions or information into the computer. So any device that we use, anything that we use to put information into a computer is what we call input. Output is the exact opposite. It's when we get something out of the computer. Now, the most common device that we use for that is a monitor. I'm looking at one at the moment um, and that shows me uh, what is currently being done inside the computer. So currently I can see on my monitor, um, I've actually got a web browser in front of me. I've got that program running. Um, I've actually got another monitor on the left, which is showing me what you're looking at right now. And a monitor over there that's also showing me a list of the tutorials and the lessons. Yes, I have three monitors. Yes, I'm a geek. Uh, so you can see that these um, monitors are a way of us seeing what is inside a computer. What is it doing right now? But alternatively, we can also use uh, headsets or speakers to get information out in a different way. We wouldn't use those to be able to play a game or to see a game, uh, but we would if we wanted to listen to something like a podcast or music or something. And of course, we use a printer as another output device, a way of getting information out of the computer so we can take it with us and walk away because you can't really do that with a monitor. So these inputs and outputs is something that is really important to understand when we're writing a program because we will often want to have something put into the program and the program will want to send something out. That is basically what a program is. It is something that starts with input or has input in it and results in some output. If it doesn't have any input or it doesn't have any output, there's really very little point having the program at all. Um, and most programs or apps on your phone that you'll think about will have input and output. You'll need to press a button, click on something, drag something, record something, and then you'll see a result or you'll hear a result after it's done some working out. So let's have a little look at how we can apply that to a simple program in Scratch. So I've got my background here like I did in the first uh, video and we've got Abby uh, Sprite standing in the middle there. So in this program, we're going to get Abby to say hello. So that'll be output. She's then going to ask us for our name. Now her asking us a question will be output because we'll see that as a question that she is giving to us. But then she will wait for some input and we will then have to use an input device, um, maybe a keyboard perhaps, to tell her what our name is. And after that, she will output hello and use our name. So to begin with, we're going to go to the events category on the left hand side here, and we're going to grab the when the green flagged button is clicked. Uh, so we've got the green flag button is clicked there. And now what we can do is get Abby to think or to say rather hello. So we go to the looks category. That's the purple one. Grab the top box and click that together. So we can say hello 
for two seconds. Now she doesn't know our name yet, so she's going to have to ask us our name. So we're going to use a different category for this one. So we can see that if she wants to say or think something, we can go into looks. You can also see that there are things like changing size or colors or costumes. Um, however, for the moment, we need to go to a new category called sensing. That's this pale blue one on the left here. And you can see that there's a block in there that says, ask, what's your name? And wait. We're going to grab that block and snap it under the purple one here. So ask, what's your name? You can change the writing in here if you want to, to say, you know, what is your name? Or give me your name? Or hello, I'm Abby, what is your name? Whatever you want, you can type something different in there if you want to. So ask, what's your name? And wait. Now, how are we going to get her to uh, actually receive our name. Well, let me show you what happens. I'm going to go full screen on this one so you can see this here. I'm going to click on the green flag. She'll start by saying hello, then what's your name, and then can you see something else on the screen? If you look closely, and I know I'm blocking part of it, let's get rid of me for a moment. There we are. You can see at the bottom there is a white box with this blue tick on the right hand side. And what that allows us to do is to enter some information. So if I was to type in my name, Justin, there, and then click the tick, that has now been given to her. Uh, the only problem is that we've given her our name and she's done nothing with it. She is so rude. So what we're going to have to do now is to get her to use our name. Now she knows what it is. So we've got when the green flag is clicked, say hello, then ask what's your name and wait. So we're now going to have to get the answer. Whatever the user types in is what we call the answer. And if you look closely on the left, underneath that box that says ask what's your name and wait, there is a little uh, extra box here called answer. I'm going to drag that over here because when we type in our name, hidden inside this little blue box will be our name. So we will have inputted it or given it to the computer and the computer will store it inside this little circle here. This text won't change, it'll just simply be a box that contains whatever we have given, whatever we have inputted. But how are we going to get her to use that? Well, we want her to say two things now at the same time. We want her to say hello and we want also for her to say our name. So we need to join two words together. Now, how can we join the word hello with whatever the answer is we've just given her? Well, the answer is in this green category here called operators. And you can see that there is a join box just down here. At the moment, it says join apple and banana, which is a bit weird, really, isn't it? How would you join an apple and a banana? Why would you want to? I don't know. Anyway, we uh, can join whatever two things we want to. And in this case, we're going to be joining the word hello and the answer, this little box that contains our name. And I can drag and drop that into the right hand oval. So now we've got join, hello and the answer, but we still haven't quite got Abby able to say those words. So normally when we want her to say something, we have to go to looks and drag out this say box. So let's do that. Let's grab this say hello for two seconds and connect that underneath. But we don't want her to say the word hello. We want her to say everything inside this green oval. Now, do you notice that this is an oval and so is this green box here? It looks like the two would connect, wouldn't it? They do. Let's drag this green block up and put it where the word hello is. And now, if I just zoom out a little bit there, you can see that she's now saying these two things together, hello and our name, or whatever answer we gave her. And she's going to say that for two seconds.
Let's run the program. I'm going to go full screen. Let's get rid of me for a moment. There we are. And we're going to click the green flag so that we can run the program. So she starts by saying hello. And then she says, what's your name? Now, nothing else is going to happen until we type in something in this box. So let me put my name as Justin. I'm going to click the tick. And you see now she says, hello, Justin. Let's do that again. What's the problem? Hello. Let's type in Bob and click the tick. Hello, Bob. Can you see what the problem is? The, the answer is that what we've got here is joining the word hello and the word answer, but we haven't put a space in between them. So how can we do that? Well, the simplest solution is in this box here where we have the word hello. We're going to simply type a space after the word hello like that. So now if we run this, let's run that full screen again. Uh, if I now run the program, there we are. Hello. Um, and then I'm going to type in uh, Becky. There we go. And now it says, hello, Becky. There we are. We've got the program working. So we now have um, a program which does output. So we are outputting information on a screen and we are also getting input. So we're putting information into the computer um, and it is then storing that and doing something with it and then outputting it again. So remember input, putting information in a computer, output, getting information out of a computer. Now, if you're looking at this video on the computerscience.click website, you'll see that there is a series of lessons, all these videos in order. But at the end of each group of lessons, after I think about four or five of these lessons, there is a little quiz. And in that quiz, there are questions on everything that I've shown you in those four or five lessons. And at the end of the whole course, if you've passed all of those quizzes or tests, you get a certificate. Uh, that certificate will be um, have your name on it, have the date you finished it, uh, have the name of the course on it and everything. You can print that off, you can save it. Um, so you will actually get a certificate for going through all of these lessons. Uh, the website also does include XP that you can use to level up your rank and compete against other people on the website. So if you are looking at this video on the Tech Train um, website, sorry, on the Tech Train channel on YouTube, you might want to have a look at computerscience.click and sign up for free and go through these lessons here and get a certificate for doing it. Um, in the next lesson, we're going to look at a type of data called strings. We've already been looking at it, but we're going to look at it in a bit more detail. So we're going to look at strings in the next video. Until then, goodbye for now.